respected Marshal Kim Jong-un, first Secretary of the Workers' Party of Korea, first Chairman of the National Defense Commission of the Democratic People's Republic of Korea, and Supreme Commander of the Korean People's Army, had a photo session with the scientists, technicians, workers, soldier builders, and officials who contributed to the successful third underground nuclear test. Present there together with him were Kim Yong-nam, Choi Yong-nim, Choi Ryong-hae and the senior officials of the party, state and army. Marshal Kim Jong-un, who invited those contributors to the nuclear test to Pyongyang and showed them unforgettable warm love, called them to the Central Committee of the Workers' Party of Korea, the Supreme Staff of the Korean Revolution, and had a picture taken with them. Coming out before the building of the party central committee with the glorious party flag flying fiercely, Marshal Kim Jong-un waved his hand and sent warm greetings to the participants, raising enthusiastic cheers. He highly appreciated the merits of the scientists, technicians, workers, soldier builders and officials who succeeded in the underground nuclear test conducted as part of practical countermeasures to defend the security and sovereignty of the country and thus demonstrated once again all over the world that Korea does what it is determined to do and gave confidence in victory and optimism to the army and people. Marshal Kim Jong-un had a picture taken with the participants, expressing the belief that they would powerfully launch a drive to push back the frontiers of science and technology in the same spirit and medal displayed in the third underground nuclear test and thus make a greater success in the scientific research for more firmly consolidating the self-defensive nuclear deterrent. Respected Marshal Kim Jong-un, first Secretary of the Workers' Party of Korea, first Chairman of the National Defense Commission of the Democratic People's Republic of Korea, and Supreme Commander of the Korean People's Army, issued an order for conducting artillery fire striking exercise and guided it on the sport to examine the combat capabilities of artillery units. He was accompanied by Che Ryong-hae and other senior officials of the party and army. Kim Jong-un heard about the plan of the exercise and arrangement of the fire units from the commander of the exercise and gave order to start the exercise. The moment the order was given, lightning retaliatory flaming shells broke the air with roars, shaking the earth and the sky, and shattered the enemy position in succession, engulfing it in flames. The shells scorched the enemy position, clearly declaring that the enemy, encroaching upon the dignity of the country and the sovereignty of the nation, cannot escape the striking range of the powerful revolutionary army of Mount Pekdu. Watching the enemy position in flames, Supreme Commander Kim Jong-un expressed satisfaction, saying it was excellent and targets were hit correctly. He said the artillery men could blow up all the targets, as they had intensively conducted the exercises, anticipating the day of battle. He added that the artillery men are loadable, and the enemy on the Yunpyeong Island was hard hit by the correct shells of the gunners of the People's Army after adventurous shelling. Supreme Commander Kim Jong-un said if the exercise turns into battle, the enemy would be hit hard by the retaliatory attack of the enraged powerful revolutionary army of Mount Pekdu, so that he cannot raise head and see the sky again. And he highly appreciated the successful fire-striking exercise. He said he gave an order by surprise and examined the preparedness for action of the units, and the exercise convinced him again that all the officers and soldiers are waiting for the order of the Supreme Commander for final attack, keeping high wariness. Kim Jong-un set forth important tasks to make perfect preparations for action of the People's Army. That day he saw arms and equipment newly developed by the People's Army. Kim Jong-un faced camera with the officers and men of the People's Army who participated in the exercise expressing the belief that they would resolutely defend the security of the country and the welfare of the people with the arms of Mount Pekdu. Respected Kim Jong-un sent gifts to the scientists, technicians, workers, soldier builders and officials 
who contributed to the successful third underground nuclear test. The ceremony of conveying the gifts was held on Tuesday. Present at the ceremony were Park Do Chun, officials concerned and contributors to nuclear test. Gift conveying address was followed by speeches. The speakers said the nuclear developers could achieve a great political and military victory in the confrontation with the United States and demonstrate the dignity and national power of Kim Il-sung, Kim Jong-il Korea all over the world thanks to the deep trust of respected Marshal Kim Jong-un. A letter of pledge to Kim Jong-un was adopted at the ceremony. Respected Kim Jong-un received messages of greetings sent by the leader of a just Russia party and the chairperson of the Liberal Democratic Party of Russia on the occasion of the Day of the Shining Star, the birth anniversary of the great leader Kim Jong-il. The messages wished good health and welfare to Kim Jong-un, peace to the Korean Peninsula and prosperity to the Korean people. They hoped that cooperation between the two countries and between the Workers' Party of Korea and those political parties would develop successfully. Meetings took place in Pakistan and Nigeria, a roundtable talk in Ethiopia and demonstration of the Taekwondoists in South Africa on the occasion of the Day of the Shining Star. Present there were many people, including personages of various circles in the given countries. Speakers at the event said, Great Kim Jong-il is an outstanding leader who devoted his all to the cause of global independence and stressed that his exploits will shine for all ages. Messages of greetings to respected Kim Jong-un were adopted at the events held in Pakistan and South Africa. Foreign televisions and radios feature the Day of the Shining Star. The Mongolian MNC television televised a portrait of the great leader Kim Jong-il and photos on the exploits performed under his Sungun-based revolutionary leadership, pictures of respected Kim Jong-un in his revolutionary activities, the scenes of Kim Jong-ilia festival held on the occasion of the Day of the Shining Star, scenes of launching man-made Earth satellite, and DPRK documentaries, including Rifle of Korea. The Cambodian state radio and radio FM 90.5 and the domestic and international channels of the broadcasting service, the Seven National Language Broadcasting Channel and Radio Renaissance of Guinea reported in detail the immortal exploits of Kim Jong-il and the Ecuadorian Teleandina 23 television televised DPRK documentaries fireworks of a thriving nation, and the tower of the Chuchi idea. The Day of the Shining Star was featured abroad. The Russian newspaper Patriot No. 7, the Thai newspaper Shinsan Daily on the 9th, and the Mongolian newspaper Mongolian Mede on the 14th, highly praised the model exploits of the great leader Kim Jong-il in their articles of different titles illustrated with his smiling portraits and photographs of Kim Jong-il and respected Kim Jong-un in their revolutionary activities. The Day of the Shining Star was also featured with articles dealing with the exploits of the great Kim Jong-il for the Korean Revolution and the cause of global independence posted on the internet homepages of the France-Korea Friendship Association, the Nigerian National Committee for the Study of the Chuchi Idea, the Swiss Preparatory Committee, the Switzerland-Korea Committee, the Swiss Group for the Study of the Chuchi Idea, the Kim Jong-il Library in Ecuador, the French Anti-Imperialist Front, and the Society for the Promotion of the Relations between Austria and the DPRK. The British Association for the Study of Sungan Policy posted an article under the title February Burning with the Union on its internet homepage on the 12th, introducing the South Korean people's boundless reverence for the great leader Kim Jong-il. The homepage carried photos on the Korean people who have become the masters of the state and society under the people-centered socialist system.
Sabiru Balul, Department Head of the Politics Faculty of the University of Damascus of Syria, issued a press statement in praise of the model revolutionary exploits of the great leader Kim Jong-il on the occasion of the Day of the Shining Star. Participants in the National Meeting of Active Three Revolution Team members visited the Kum Susan Palace of the Sun and paid homage to the great leaders Kim Il-sung and Kim Jong-il on the 26th. A reception was given at the Yang Gakdo International Hotel in Pyongyang on Tuesday in honor of the scientists, technicians, workers, soldier builders and officials who contributed to the success in the third underground nuclear test. Present there were Che Yong Nim and the senior officials of the Central Committee of the Workers' Party of Korea and officials concerned. Invited to the reception were the nuclear test contributors. Speaker at the reception stressed that those in the field of defense science should do justice to the great trust and expectation of the party with loyalty, always keeping deep in their minds the tremendous benevolence shown by respected Marshal Kim Jong-un. Employees of the hotel gave a performance at the reception. Contributors to the nuclear test visited the fitness center in Tongil Street of Pyongyang on Tuesday. Respected Marshal Kim Jong-un sent birthday press to academician, professor and doctor and Kim Jong-il Prize winner Ko kyung dal researcher of Kim Tse University of Technology, labor hero Chung Sun won manager of a unit under the South Hwangye Provincial Fishery Management Bureau, and people's athlete Oh Sun Jin, chief weightlifting coach of the sports team of the Dongnim Mining Machine Factory on the occasion of their 70th birth anniversary. Dennis Rodman, former player of the NBA or the National Basketball Association of the United States and this party, flew in Pyongyang on the 26th. The Democratic People's Republic of Korea, concerning the successful launch of the man-made Earth satellite Kwang myung 3 Mark II on December 12, 2101 or 2012, presented to the United Nations a document for registration of the satellite as a signatory to the Convention on Registration of Projectiles Launched into the Space. The UN Space Office recently drafted the UN official document STSGSERE 662 related to the registration of the Kwang Myung Sung 3 Mark II and posted it on the space registry of the website of the UN Space Office and the website of the UN E Archives. As a result, the registration of the Korean satellite done via the legal procedures according to the international laws concerned has been finished. A meeting of solidarity was sponsored by the Communist Party of the Democratic Congo in Kinshasa on the 19th in support of the launch of the satellite Kwang Myung Sung 3 Mark II and the successful third underground nuclear test of the DPRK. The January-February issue of Line of March, the organ of the Revolutionary Communist Party of Britain, Marxist-Leninist, carried a special write-up under the title DPRK's exercise of the right to use space for peaceful purpose is a fight to defend sovereignty.